More than a dozen companies are reportedly cutting ties with Sean Diddy Combs after a string of sexual assault allegations. According to Rolling Stone, 18 companies ended their partnership with Combs' e-commerce platform known as Empower Global. Combs founded the marketplace in 2021 to promote black-owned businesses and to help people shop black every day. This isn't the only business shakeup for Diddy. Last month, he temporarily stepped down as chairman of the TV network Revolt. And his Sean John clothing line is being phased out at Macy's. Alcoholic beverage giant Diageo told a New York judge that it could not allow Diddy to be featured in De Leon's promotional content because of his, quote, toxic image. Now, that's Diddy's own tequila brand. De Leon is the proper pronunciation, by the way. I think I messed that up. This all comes in the aftermath of multiple women coming forward in response to uh, sexual assault allegations. In the recent months, we've seen a string of them come for Diddy. And it started with a bombshell lawsuit by his former partner and R&B artist, Cassie Ventura. Last month, she accused Diddy of rape, sex trafficking, and physical abuse. The lawsuit was settled 24 hours later. Two other women came forward to accuse him of sexual abuse in New York court last month as well. And last week, an unnamed fourth woman filed an additional lawsuit claiming that Combs and two others drugged and gang raped her in Diddy's New York studio when she was 17 years old. Her lawsuit included pictures of her in his studio sitting on Diddy's lap. Combs released a statement on Instagram saying, quote, for the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. There may be more alleged victims coming forward, so what does this mean for Diddy's legacy? And also, what does this mean for Diddy's freedom? Joining me now to discuss this is entertainment lawyer Shay Lawson. She's the owner and managing attorney of the law firm of Lawson McKinley. She's also an adjunct professor at the Emory University School of Law. Shay, so good to see you. Uh, Diddy settled the lawsuit against him with Cassie. Does that have any bearing on how these other three lawsuits that have similar allegations uh, might be handled? I don't think so. I don't think that they have the weight or veracity that the Cassie story has. We know from her attorney's previous statements, they were in negotiations for settlements for months before the complaint was even filed. So when we talk about the speed of the settlement, well, a lot of people aren't really calculating how long they have been in communication and trying to resolve this outside of court. Whereas these other allegations, they don't have the level of detail. They don't have the length of time where Cassie's allegations last for almost a 10 year period. So I just don't think that they can be handled in the <coughs> same manner that we're talking apples and oranges, although the allegations are similar in nature. Well, let's talk about some of these other allegations, because some of these suits against Diddy uh, also include allegations against other singers and other executives who worked or were employed by Bad Boy Records. Uh, does naming other people help to put pressure on companies and corporations? I'm thinking specifically about this question of accountability. When we're talking about accountability, dropping other names won't help you. What is really working in the favor of getting accountability where we're saying, okay, Diddy needs to step down from revolt. All of these businesses that you mentioned from uh, Empire, Empower rather, are separating themselves from the platform. And what we really see here is that now these allegations, specifically from the, the Cassie complaint, are being widespread. There was coverage across every major media news source of it. And so when we talk about the reputation of a company, brand damage to a company, look at the injunction that um, Diageo has in court, it's specifically about the brand reputation and now the toxic reputation that Diddy has. And I don't think adding other individuals to the claim makes it stronger because they don't have the global renown that Diddy has. Now, do I think that it will help federal prosecutors if they decide to explore other charges against Diddy that we see that there are others involved in, in this enterprise, that there may be other potential witnesses who may cooperate with them so that they can be removed as defendants? Absolutely. But as far as accountability of separating from these different businesses, I don't think adding the other names added anything to the fire. Now, again, I want to emphasize that Diddy claims none of this is true. All the allegations are untrue. Uh, if that were the case, could he take 
legal action against the people accusing him. Uh, also, could he sue the companies that are pulling away from him during this wave of lawsuits? So that's a really good question, Mark. And let's put it in two separate buckets. So one, when we talk about the allegations that the uh, victims are coming forward with and they have put these lawsuits out here. Absolutely. If it comes out that this was a public statement that was made against someone um, stating that they did something of a criminal nature that was knowingly false and malicious and caused damage, such as him being separated from these brands, losing revenue opportunities, that sets up a classic case for defamation, which is often used to silence victims, saying that if you come out, no one will believe you and I will sue you for defamation. But that is a true legal claim that you have. You cannot make Make false statements about someone, especially of a criminal nature and the level of the, the claims that we're talking about here with Diddy, and think that if they are untrue, there will be no consequences. And so I just think with having that weight on their shoulders, I'm sure that that's something that all of um, those who have brought complaints considered and, you know, really standing in they, this is their truth and he's standing in his and uh, some of these may be brought to a court of law. Now, separate from that, the separate bucket of now, can he sue these companies that are coming away from his platforms? No, he can't. What claim does he have? Especially for the Empower Global website, it's a subscription base. Uh, in their terms and conditions, it says that you can terminate at any time for any reason by providing right. written notice. And, and if anything, I would imagine if, 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 if Diddy were proven, if, if it were proven that these allegations were false, the companies have a right to say, look, we don't want to work with you because your reputation is bad, it would seem to me that the relief he'd be looking for would be coming from the people who falsely accused him for selling his reputation and costing him that business. He, he, couldn't, he couldn't sue the company for saying, hey, we don't want to be around somebody who's been accused of, of sexual assault. Is that, is that a fair assessment? Correct. That's exactly what I'm saying here. Okay, I just want to make sure I understand because I'm not a lawyer and I don't be understanding this stuff. Uh, during the legal window, uh, in New York City anyway, to file lawsuits for assault uh, from the past, uh, you know, that go beyond the statute of limitations that we normally see. Uh, we had Cuba Gooding Jr., we had Jamie Foxx, we had Bill Cosby, uh, Marcus Wiley, all hit with sexual misconduct or assault lawsuits. Are we seeing a second wave of the Me Too movement uh, with black entertainment moguls? I don't think so, because Me Too was specific to entertainment. However, when we talk about the adult survivors of sexual assault, which was the New York law that expanded the statute of limitations, when you look at the majority of cases that were filed, they were actually filed against prisons. They were actually filed against hospitals and doctors that took advantage of patients and took advantage of prisoners. So the Me Too movement was, was specific to entertainment, whether it was film, TV, or music. Here, the adult survivors of sexual assault in New York saw a wider grasp of industries, but was really concentrated on prisons, jails, and hospitals, and not the entertainment industry itself. Absolutely. Entertainment and intellectual property lawyer Shay Lawson, she's in the building today with a brilliant legal analysis. We're going to have her back to give more of that. Uh, Shay, thanks so much for joining us. Everybody stay here.